Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to always give him the thanks. Another day right now to always give him the praise. Another day right now to always give him the glory. Another day right now to always magnify and shout out his holy name. Because he is King of Kings and he is Lord of Lords. There is nothing too hard for our God. There is nothing <clears throat> too difficult for our God. He is still in control and he is still in charge. One thing, my sisters, one thing, my brothers, we must have a measure of faith while we are going through our tests. I said we must have a measure of faith while we are going through our tests. And, and I know that the test that you are going through is not an easy test. See, but one thing you got to know about God, God is not going to put more on you, my sisters. God is not going to put more on you, my brothers, if you can't handle the pressure, if you can't handle the pain, if you can't handle the suffering, but most of all, if you can't handle the test. He's not going to allow you to go through it because he cares for you that much. But while you are going through your test, you must praise his holy name. While you're going through your test, you must continue to seek him. While you're going through your test, you must continue to praise and worship and glorify his holy name. While you're going through your test, you must continue to adore our Heavenly Father God. Continue to get on your knees and pray. Continue to seek. Continue to ask. Continue to knock. Praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, glory, hallelujah, he is still on the throne and he is still performing miracles and wonders. Each and every day. In the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. And if you know that God is your everything. And if you know that God got your back. And if you know that God has never left you or forsake you. If you know that God will never do you wrong. Give him a shout out of praise right now. Glorify his name right now. If you know that. That's why I want to say thank you, Jesus, because you never left me. Thank you, Jesus. You never failed me. Jesus, I had checked my track record so many times, and God, you always been there. God, you always came through. God, you always delivered. So, yes, God, I'm going to thank you. Yes, God, I'm going to praise you. Yes, God, I'm going to glorify you, even if I got to do it by myself. I want to say thank you, Jesus. I want to say thank you, Jesus, because he is worthy. I say he is worthy to be praised. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, I just come before you right now today peacefully and humbly in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank you just for the day. Thank you, Heavenly Father God, for breathing life instead of your daughters, your sons, and even myself today. Thank you, Heavenly Father God, for our health. Thank you, Father God, for our strength. Thank you, Father God, that we that you've given us a chance and an opportunity, Father God, to seek you again. But most of all, Jesus, that we are able to put our faith, our trust, and our hope in your hand again today. Another day, God, that we can ask you anything. Another day, God, that we can continue to seek you Another day, God, that we continue to knock. God, we still holding on to you. Father God, we still holding on to your words. Father God, we still holding on to your promises. Father God, even, even though we're going through a waiting process, we still trust in you. Because, God, if we didn't believe in you, Father God, we didn't have that enough faith and trust and hope in you, God. Father God, we'd have been let go. But God, we know we're in this waiting process for a reason. God, we know that you got this. Father God, we don't know how you're going to show up. Father God, we don't know how you're going to show out. But God, we know that you're going to come through. Because we serve an amazing God. 
We serve a faithful God. We serve an on-time God. We serve a loving God who cares for us. So God, you continue to have your way. And Father God, even though we might not see anything, it does not mean that you're not working. Because God, one thing we know for sure, one thing we know for a fact, that you are always working, that you are never too busy for your children, that we can call on you any time of the day, that you will always be right there. And Father God, even though you, even though that you might not answer us, answer us the way that we want us to, that you want us to answer us. But God, we know that you got us. Father God, we know that we know for a fact that we're in the palm of your hand, Psalms ninety one. And Father God, as long as we know that we're in the palm of your hand, you letting us know right now that everything's okay, that everything will be all right. So Father God, we're going to continue to seek you and praise you and glorify you. Father God, there's no place that we're ready to be at right now today, Jesus, but in your house to worship you and glorify you and exalt your holy name. Father God, there's no place that we're ready to be at right now today, God, just to be in your presence right now. Father God, we ain't giving up on you. Father God, we're still in this thing together. But Father God, we're here today to let you know that we can't do this by ourselves. So Father God, we are asking you for help. We're asking you for your strength today. We're asking you, God, for guidance and direction because we need you, Jesus, to get us through this. Because, Jesus, it's a hard battle. It's a hard, long walk. It's hard for us, God, to wait. But, God, so that's why we depend on you. Father God, that's why we rely on you. Allow your presence to be known through this place right now. Father God, I'm asking you to do a new thing in my sister's life today. Father God, I'm asking you to do a new thing through my brother's life right now today. Father God, I'm asking you to do a new thing through me today. Father God, you know exactly what we are going through. You know exactly what we are facing. And God, I'm asking you to touch us right now and lift us up. Father God, only you can do what you can do. So Father God, we are trusting you each and every day. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene on this. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to, to step in and fill in the gap right now. Father God, let your words speak to somebody today. Let your promises move to somebody today. Father God, I believe today that someone will give their life over to you today. Someone is tired of running. Someone is tired of skipping. Someone is tired of hopping and jumping. Someone is saying, I'm tired. I want you to be my Lord and Savior Christ today. And I want to say congratulations to you today, my sisters or my brothers, whoever you are. Welcome to the family. The angels are in heaven are rejoicing right now because someone will give their life over to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to say it's such a blessing today to be in the house of the Lord today. It is such a blessing that God has allowed me to minister his word today. And I want to welcome all my new brothers and sisters to the Lord Takeover Ministry. This is Servant Minister LT. And we're here today to be in the house of the Lord. We're here today to let God do his thing. Father God, let your will be done. And Father God, we give you thanks. We give you praise and glory in the house of the Lord today. Let the church come together and say, Amen and Amen. And before I get started, I want to repent of our sins because every last one of us has dropped the ball today. Every last one of us has made some mistakes today. We even fell short of His grace and mercy today. Every last one of us did that. So if you can't keep it real and be honest with Jesus, you can't keep it real and be honest with nobody. So I need my keep it real brothers and sisters to join with me in praise and repent and repentance right now, if that's okay. Heavenly Father God, I boldly ask of you in your holy precious mighty name to please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every and anything Jesus that we've done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our heart that was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, even myself, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Please forgive us right now. Wash us clean right now. Purify us through your blood right now. Wash us as white as snow right now. 
Father God, I'm asking you right now today, God, please forgive us for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a second chance. Thank you, Father God, for giving us another opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a clean new slate. Thank you, Father God, for hearing us out. Thank you, Heavenly Father God, for understanding. Thank you, Heavenly Father God, for coming through. You didn't have to do it today, but you did. So, Father God, we want to thank you. We want to praise you and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I just can't thank you enough for this awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I just can't thank you, Father God, for who you are, what you have done, what you're about to do. I just can't thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. I can't thank you, Father God, for our health and our strength. I can't thank you, Father God, for the food that you have blessed and prepared to put on that table, the clothes and shoes that you put on that back. I just can't thank you, Father God, for your words and your promises. I just can't thank you, Father God, for the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now. I just can't thank the Father God for the Holy Spirit that is moving to us right now. I just can't thank you, Father God, because you're not a man that you should not lie, that you stand on your words, that you stand on your promises, that you not can even change your mind even if you wanted to, that you cannot even disown yourself even if you wanted to. I just can't thank you, Father God, because you're still in control, you're still in, you're still in charge. I just can't thank you, Father God, because you are healing and you're also a deliverer. I just can't thank you, Father God, because you will come through. On your own time. I just can't thank the Father God for your love and your patience. I just can't thank the Father God that you were always right there with us every step of the way. I just can't thank the Father God that we can always call on your name, that you will always be right there. I just can't thank the Father God because your word tells us in Hebrews 13 verse 5 that you never leave us nor forsake us, that you never do us wrong, that you don't start anything in our life and just leave us, just leave us dry. I just can't thank the Father God for your love. I just can't thank the Father God for your up uh, for your un, for 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 your for for who you are. I just can't thank the Father God how you still watches over us, how you still protect us. I just can't thank the Father God how you moving mountains right now on our behalf, and we don't even see it or realize it. I just can't thank the Father God for our blessing. I can't thank the Father God for our breakthrough. I can't thank the Father God for our anointing. I can't thank the Father God for our deliverance. I can't thank the Father God for our double portion. I can't thank the Father God for more than enough. I can't thank the Father God for the open doors. I can't thank the Father God for the closed doors. I can't thank the Father God for the connection. I can't thank the Father God for the rain. I can't thank the Father God for the help. I can't thank the Father God for your mercy. I can't thank the Father God because you are a real God. You are awesome. God, you're amazing, God. You don't, you the God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. I just can't think of Father God how things about to start lining up. I just can't think of Father God how you're gonna put us at the right place at the right time. I just can't think of Father God how things about to start manifesting. I just can't think of Father God because we about to meet our Boaz. I just can't think of Father God because you about to open up the floodgates of heaven and that you about to pour out a blessing on your sons, a blessing on your daughters, a blessing on me, Jesus, that we gonna better receive it all. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you. That's why I magnify you. That's why I shout out your holy name every day, Jesus. That's why I put my heart into you every day, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I praise and I worship you from the bottom of my heart. That's why I brag. That's why I boast about you, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know right now that you can't thank him enough. Amen. Amen. I believe today that God is about to speak to somebody today. 
God is about to enlighten somebody today. God is about to give you the strength to do what you need to do. Because he already given you the authority and the power to trouble over the enemy's head and neck. These attacks are coming and happening for a reason. Because they know who you are. You see, but the enemy knows that his time is up. Someone has been going through a lot of attacks right now. See, see, see these attacks are happening for a reason. Because they know their time is up, but they know who you are. And they know, listen to me carefully, my sisters. Listen to me carefully, my brothers. They know that you are coming. They know that you're about to come holler at them sooner than later. Amen? Amen. So we're going to read Matthew 8. And we're going to read verses 28 through uh, 34. Then we're going to read Luke. We're going to go to um, um, Luke. Luke 4, and we're going to read verses 31 through 36. Amen? Amen. So let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 8, and we're going to read, start at verse 28, and we're going to finish up at 34. And if you, and if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. When he arrived at the other side in the region of the gardeners, two, de two demon possessed men coming from the tombs, met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God? They shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? So do you see? They know who you are. The demons know who you are because they know your power. They know it is Jesus that is living inside of you. So these attacks it's coming for a reason, but when they know who you are, they come to meet you, and they're going to say, what you come to here for? To torture us, because they know they can't handle you. They know that they can't handle you, because God is giving you the power today, my sisters. God is giving you the authority today, my sisters. God is giving you the power and authority today, my brothers, to defeat those demons that have been trying to attack you or your family. But they know who you are. They know who you are. And they know that you're coming. They ain't surprised. It's someone that you're close to that you know has been going through some demonic, some demonic spirits. But God has given you the power and authority to drive them out. Sometimes we depend on preachers. Sometimes we depend on our pastors and reverends and rabbis and a, and a, and a, and a lex and, a, and, a, and the reverends to do it. But God said, no, you can do it. He has given you the right and the power and the authority to handle that business. Are you following what I'm saying? Some distance from them, a large herd of pigs was feeding. The demons begged Jesus, if you drive us out and send us into the herd of pigs. He said to them, go. So they came out and went into the pigs. The whole herd rushed down the steep, bank into the lake and died in the water. Those tending to the pigs ran off, went into the town and reported all this, including what had happened to the demon possessed man. Then the whole town went out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. So the, the, the demons, they know who you are. But when they see you, when they see you, they know who you are. They know who you with. They know who you ride with. They know who your father is. They know the power inside of you. They know the spirit inside of you. And they know they got authority. But you're going to tell that, that demon, get out of my son. Get out of my daughter. Get out of my husband. Get out of my wife. And they're going to flee. Because God is giving you the power and authority. So that's why these attacks is happening to them loved ones right now. God is saying, today is the day that I'm giving you the right. 
God is telling you today, and I'm giving you the power to drive those demons out right now. What are you going to do today, my sisters? What are you going to do today, my brothers? They know who you are. They are more afraid of you than anything. And we all have some type of loved one that's going through it. So yes, these attacks are happening for a reason. But until you use your power and your authority, them attacks are going to continue to happen. God has released power over you today, my sisters, my brothers. God has given you the right and God has given you the authority to drive them out. Are you going to use your right today? Are you going to use your authority today? Are you going to use your power that God has given you to drive them out? Are you? Because when they deemed this, they met Jesus, look what they told Jesus. What do you want with us? What do you want with us? They was already trembling. They knew Jesus had the power. They knew Jesus had the authority. And it's the same God that's living inside of you right now today, my brothers and my sisters. So yes, you had the right. Yes, you had the power. And yes, you had the authority. But you got to use your authority today. Or are you going to use it? Let's go to Luke chapter 4. And we're going to read verses 31 through 36. Luke 4. And we're going to read verses 31 through 36. If you have it, let the church say amen. Then he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, on the Sabbath, began to teach the people. They were amazed at his teaching because his message had authority. In the synagogue, there was a man possessed by a demon, an evil spirit. He cried out to the top of his voice, Ha! Huh? What do you want with us? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come here to destroy us? I Look what he said. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. See, do you see what I'm talking about? Even the demons know who you are. They know who you are. And that's what they're saying. Ha! Huh? But you come to destroy us? We've been living in your son. We've been living in your daughters. We've been living in your husband. We've been living in your wife. What you come to do? They know that you coming to you. They know that you come to handle business. That's how they know who you are. The spirits know that their time is up. So it ain't. It ain't your husband, it ain't your wife, it ain't your son or your daughter doing these things. It is the evil demonic spirit that have control over your husband. It is the evil demonic spirit that have control over your wife. It is the evil demonic spirit that have control of your son and your daughter. But God is giving you the right, God is giving you the power, and God is giving you the authority to stop that situation right now today. They know who you are. Look what they're telling God. I know who you are. Then the demons tell Jesus that in Matthew, I know who you are. They know it is the living God and the Holy Spirit that is moving through you. And they know they can't touch you at all. So yes, what, what these attacks is coming from is the evil one. And I know, I know that you might be mad and upset at your husband right now or your wife right now or your son right now or your daughter right now or, or someone that's close to you. But one thing you got to realize, it ain't them who's doing it. It is the evil demonic spirit that has control of them. But God has given you the right and authority to drive them out. Because they've been, they've been possessed. By the evil spirit. But God say, I'm giving you the right son. I'm giving you the right daughter. I'm giving you authority. So when you go meet your husband. When you go meet your wife. When you go meet your son and your daughter. Their friend. Yes, they're going to say, we know who you are. But you come to here to do something about this. And you're going to say, yes, I am coming to do something about this. 
then that's when you use your right and your power because why? It is the living God that's already living inside of you. It's the living God that's breathing inside of you. So God is giving you every right and every opportunity and the authority to drive them out. Yeah, they know you. They know that you're about that game. That's where they're going to meet you. They knew who Jesus was. They knew Jesus was no joke. And it's Jesus that is living inside of you. It is Jesus that is breathing inside of you. Look what they say. I know who you are. The Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out. See the power? Do you see the authority when Jesus said, come out? That's what he's telling you right now today, my sisters. That's what he's telling you right now today, my brothers. Come out of my husband. Come out of my wife. Come out of my son. Come out of my daughter. Come out of my friend. Come out. Then the demons threw the man down before them. And all came out without injuring him. All the people were amazed. Said to each other, what is this teaching? With what? Authority. I told you. And what? And power. See, God is giving you the authority and power. That's what he's giving you. The authority and power. There's no need to be scared. God is giving you the authority and he's giving you the power. My brothers and sisters. He gives what? He gives order. God gives order to the evil spirit. And they came out. So God is giving you order today, my sisters. God is giving you order today, my brothers, over every demonic stronghold spirit attack that's coming against your marriage, that's coming against your finances, that's coming against your health, your dreams, your ministry, your, your business, your ministry. God is giving you the power and authority to say, come out. You don't live here no more. God is giving you the power and authority to drive them out. And once you use your power, and once you use your authority, the word of God is telling you the evil spirit is going to come out. But your husband will not be injured. Your wife, she will not be injured. Your son will not be injured. Your daughter will not be injured. Your close friend will not be injured. Because it's your power and your authority that will spook those spirits. They trembling right now because they know who you are. And they know that you're coming. They know you're coming from a mile away. They say, uh oh, here come this lady. She come to drive me, come to drive me out. I've been living in her husband for quite some time, but I know she's coming. Uh oh, he come in and say LT, I know he's coming. He come to drive those spirits out. Because God is giving you the power and the authority to do it. God control. Gives order. And God is giving you order right now today, my sisters. God is giving you order right now today, my brothers. To drive those demonic spirits out. Right now. They've been camping way too long in your marriage. They've been camping way too long in your husband. They've been camping way too long in your wife. They've been camping way too long in your son. They've been camping way too long in your daughter. They've been camping way too long in your health. They've been camping way too long in your dreams. They've been camping way too long in your business. They've been camping way too long in your ministry. God is giving you the power and authority. He is giving you orders to drive them out right now. They know who you are. They know who you are. There's no need to be scared no more. There's no need to be continue to look at the situation when you know what it is. It ain't them. It ain't your husband why he acting that way. It ain't your wife why she acting that way. It ain't your children why they acting that way. It is the demonic spirits has took over. But God is telling you right now today. I'm giving you the power and authority to drive them out. Are you going to use your power today? Are you going to use your authority today, my sisters, my brothers? Is what God has told me to ask somebody today. Because trust me, those, those demonic spirits, they know you're coming. They know, they know for a fact that you're coming. 
They know that you come to save their loved one. And yes, they're going to meet you. Yes, they're going to talk to you. But you come here for to destroy us. We know who you are. That's what they're going to say. We know who you are. By them knowing who you are, they know it's power inside of you. When they know who you are, they know it is the authority inside of you. When they know who you are, they know it's the living God that is living inside of you. Why do you think that loved one is reaching out and say, I need you to come see me? It's the reason why that loved one is reaching out more to you now because they are tired. They tired. Only you can drive those demonic spirits out of your husband. Only you can drive those demonic spirits out of your wife. Only you can drive those demonic spirits out of your sons and your daughters. God has given you the power. God has given you the authority. Are you going to use it today? I don't know who God is talking to right now. I don't know who God is preaching to right now. But someone has been attacked. But these attacks have to stop. And the only way that these attacks is going to stop is when you use your power and your authority to drive out them demonic spirits out of your loved one. They've been going through it for quite some time. They've been battling this situation for quite some time. Use what God gave you. I say my point I'm making today, use what God gave you and you will see the glory of God going to stand right there in front of your face. And if you use what God has given you, which is the power and authority, watch, you will see God's glory stand right before you. I believe today, I declare today, I prophesize today that my sisters and my brothers, even myself, we're going to use what God gave us. Yes, they know we're coming. Yes, they know who we are. Yes, they're going to meet us. But we're going to drive you out. We claim victory. I said we claim victory over our loved ones right now today. By the blood of Jesus, you know that we come and they know exactly who you are. And if you know God is talking to you, you know this word is for you. Give God some thanks and praise and glory in the house of the Lord right now today. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you, come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying a simple little prayer, that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in, get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is with us, AMG. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always praise him. Always put your faith, your trust, and hope in Jesus. Always continue to hold on to Jesus. Always continue to walk with him. Always continue to have have fellowship with Jesus. Always put your always put your heart into Jesus. Always, always pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Because Jesus is your everything. He is your only hope. He is your rock, your salvation, your healing, your protector. Always continue to pray for your fellow sisters and brothers. It doesn't matter if you know them. It does not matter if you've ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my fellow sisters and brothers. The only thing I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to this seven minutes LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.